Vegas Entertainment Channel on Twitch. We're brought to you in partnership with Pinnacle Entertainment Group, the makers of the Savage Worlds game system. I'm your host and GM, James Durham. Uh, the Reliable is an interactive Savage Worlds tabletop RPG show where you, our audience, have a direct impact on the story and events on the show. Uh, I want you to uh, take a moment now and check out the store and see how you can, in fact, interact with this show uh, right now. Uh, we got some really cool stuff in there, like the shout out so that uh, you can say whatever you want to our players. Maybe you want to uh, uh, give somebody a birthday wish. Maybe you want to say a bad pun. Maybe you want to make fun of us or point out a flaw in the story. Maybe you want to help the heroes out. The shout out gives you access to that. We have friends with benefits, so you can buy a Benny into a pool shared by the cast of characters. They can use these for all kinds of incredible things in Savage Worlds, from keeping themselves alive to re-rolling dice and even influencing the story. You can treat the GM and do the same thing, except you give the uh, Benny to me and I get to spend it to make things harder, make mm. things worse, uh, make them have a rougher time of everything. We have win, lose, or draw, where any player can, instead of drawing a single card, draw two cards for the initiative count and choose whichever one they want. If you just want to see us dance like puppets on strings, you can get dance, magic dance, and just simply make us dance for your amusement. We will do so. Uh, we also have a uh, story time where you can pick a member from the cast and that character will tell you something from their backstory. We also have uh, the rule of cool, which is uh, what we use for when the physics mean nothing and we want to do the craziest and wildest stuff and every member of the cast picks something, goes through some crazy elaborate plan and then you, our audience, get to vote on that and decide which one of them automatically gets a success with a raise, and who else still has to attempt it at a horrible penalty? <laughs> and then, of course, there is the uh, hack attack, which is uh, you want to add something, anything to the story. Maybe it's a sentient transforming Winnebago. Maybe it's a giant flood. Maybe it's turning all of the soldiers into uh, Koopa Troopas, uh, but not actually Koopa Troopas because copyright infringement. <laughs> I mean, that, that's all of the stuff there. Uh, I think there is a new store item. I don't see it in the store today, but uh, it should be in there at some point, perhaps today or down the road. We're adding a confidential, uh, where, uh, a, a reliable source. Yeah, our, our, our confessional, a reliable source where any one of our cast members that you select gets to uh, break that fourth wall and do a reality show style aside to you, the audience, perhaps describing how they feel about it, uh, how they feel about their friends, how they feel about the circumstances, or any number of other interesting things. But I mean, that, that that's our store for us. So, uh, hey, now that I'm done with the store, how about I tell you about who's in the show? I've got Bryce Bebop playing the daring Vector Reigns. Uh, he's the cocky action hero extraordinaire, a former space commando and reality TV star. We have Christian Doyle as Jonah Mox, serving out the uh, remainder of his prison sentence paroled to the team. Jonah Mox is the last surviving member of a species of shape-altering beings. Xander Layden is Paul, an enormous rock-like creature and the last survivor of their dimension. Paul is an expert in all things science, academic, medicine, and occult. Driven by insatiable curiosity, they greatly look forward to each new dimension and discovery on the team's travels. We have Helen Roundhill as Princess Hedgehog. Ooh, that's some echo. The last <laughs> remaining goblin from their dimension. I can't do it. From their dimension. Princess Hedgehog is a powerful practitioner of magic who greatly misses the being the center of attention from their adoring fans. Can someone please do something with the echo? It's bad. Is that the magic? It, it could be. It's probably the magic. I also deserve twice as much fanfare, so. <sighs> now entering the arena. Welcome uh, to the Thunderdome. Together, they are the Reliables, traveling through time and dimensions to make the universe a better place, one mistake at a time. So uh, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the game system that we use on this show. Like many tabletop RPGs, Savage Worlds uses a dice system. 
The better a character or creature is at a skill or attribute, the higher the die used in conjunction with the attribute or skill. Many basic tasks are success on a four or more. With the roles that exceed by, by four or more number being phases. In addition, almost every die roll in Savage Worlds can ace. This is when the die roll is the highest possible number. When this occurs, you get to roll the die again and add it together, potentially triggering yet another ace. Initiative in Savage Worlds, or determining who goes within the turn order, is determined by a deck of playing cards, with those drawing the highest cards acting first. In the case of a Joker, not only can that character take that turn at any time, including interrupting an action in progress, but any skill or attribute roles made by the character within that turn get a plus two bonus. Overall, Savage Worlds is fast, furious, and fun, just like the creators intended it to be. I hope you enjoy the show and the game system. This week's episode begins with a team already in the field. Are we jumping right to narration because uh, I can't hear a word you're saying? Nope. It's like a Pink Floyd album in here. I, I think Xander said something. <laughs> what was that, folks? <laughs> Technical difficulties. Ah. Uh, I mostly you just didn't get a echo. continuous echo. Yeah, it, it, it's overpowering. Eventually, we're going to figure out who Jonah is. Episode three, audio problem, part two. <laughs> Really? Huh. I'm hearing echo every time I talk. Me too. Yep. Me three, I think. Yep, there it is. Mm-hmm. Are you hearing yourself echo or other people echo? Yes. Everyone, including myself. I'm sorry, I echo. Oh, um, I didn't get any echo from Bryce there. Yep. So, cool. Oh. Space. I'm gonna keep um, got it, bud. in Still space. Talking. No one can hear you echo, <laughs> but they certainly can in this stream. <laughs> I'm super glad. You know, wow, things. I don't hear. I just uh, want to thank everyone for coming down. Hmm. And uh, oh, I can't hear myself. I right can't now. hear you. That's something. Uh, Xander is very quiet, oh. but still echoing. What? Oh, now he's not quiet. Okay. <laughs> now I hear the echo, though. Yeah. So. Oh boy. He's feeling. Now I can hear myself. Mm -hmm. Man. It's not going in the outgoing, but in our shared channel for us, everything is echoing. I don't know about anyone else. This is uh, very entertaining to me. Yeah. Oh, I. Good Xander, time. say something. Hey, Xander, say something. Yeah? Yeah, you're still echoing, okay. Yeah. yeah the only one I don't have an echo from is Bryce. I do what I can. What That's a wonderful good. opportunity right now. Uh, here, you know? We can say it, and it'll come back to us. <laughs> oh, no echo oh, from no. Hey, hey, you're good. No echo! Hey, so are you. Hey, yeah, baby. Or from Xander. One echo and, at oh. a time. I can't hear myself <laughs> echoing anymore either. I kind of miss it. I, uh, not gonna I lie. Do. Oh, I hear it. It was audio poison, but you know. All right. Uh, it's much better because now I don't have to hear myself talk, which is like the most painful thing in the world to me. So, James Crippen. Where was I? Oh, yes. This week's episode begins with the team already in the field, having arrived in Dimension 01111. While Ranger Rhonda guards the Reliance, John Stone is attempting to circumvent the protections put into place by Pierce in our last episode. Protections that put the Reliance on timed jumps throughout the Dimensions, far beyond the control of the team. What exactly Pierce was planning or attempting to achieve when he did this is still unknown. But there are still missions to accomplish, and with the Reliance set to jump on a timer, the heroes are on the clock. Here in Dimension 01111, 
The team has boarded the massive star base Gamma-6, a hub of activity within this dimension. Their mission is to secure an extra-dimensional being smuggled here and being analyzed by corporate scientists for nefarious purposes. The massive aging star base is home to a multitude of species and has a population of nearly 50 million beings. In one section of Gamma-6 are the highly secure corporate headquarters of the Van Sy Corporation, where their objective is currently being held. How will the team find a way past the high-tech security and armed guards to liberate this extra-dimensional prisoner? With the Reliance scheduled to depart this dimension in only three hours, time is running short. Heroes? We don't like to be called that. That's pretty generous. You know, I think maybe you should I talk honestly to can't believe they let me yourself. off the ship without John Stone. I'm kind of excited about it. Hmm. You, he said he's watching, I guess, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. He said he had the ship situation under control too. And I can bet you dollars to donuts. He does not. Do you like donuts? Uh, I don't know. I've never actually had one. Okay, I've only seen okay. them on the TV. Saying, a phrase. I may sense. have to How sleep many... in a jar, but my cell is the only room on the Reliance with a television. And that's pretty much all I do. I am jealous. How many dollars to donuts? Can That's okay. You Prime television have? is uh, terrible. I can't get enough of it. Honestly, it's mm. it's really bad. So, team, we've got to get inside here, and I'm not sure what you guys are thinking. I know that you can do it, though. Is that is that J John Stony enough? Yeah. It is. Okay. It is. Be mostly because you just basically told us nothing. Yeah, that that's all, what I get from him, really. Yeah, yeah, you and me both, bud. So uh, what are our options here? We have a couple of ways we can crack this particular nut. You got any suggestions? I imagine you're leading the mission, right? Uh, of course I am, since John's not here. <clears throat> well, <laughs> so with all of our skills... I think we could go at it a couple different ways. Now, I don't know how you guys do with talking to people, but pretty much people let me do what I want. So we could just walk in the front door. It might be, look at Paul, a little off-putting. Look at I'm Paul. very good with people. I don't know if you're aware of this. They have a way of believing everything I say at face value and trusting and loving me instantly. Uh, I don't know if you knew that. Mm -mm. No, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that you're just adorable. It's true. So charismatic. But you are an eight foot tall rock man, and that might be distracting if we're trying to walk in the front door. Mm -hmm. uh, correction, not a man. I do not have any gender. I am Paul. That's but, true. you know, an go off, foot, I an guess. An eight foot tall Paul made of rock. I'm so sorry. I just the legs and arms. Oh, it's, you know, with this deep masculine baritone, it's easy mistake to make. Oh, baby, you're but if you look very closely, no secondary sexual characteristics, believe it or not. You know, I, uh, as it is exactly at eye level for me, I did notice. <laughs> mm. None I from noticed you were studying. Either. Mm. So we could talk our way in. We could just go in. I'm always now, in for a blaze of glory. It does look like we can get in through the vents. Without... And I'm vent sized. It would be I'm slow going for most of you, but I mean, not for me. I mean, how big are these uh, vents? It's a good mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Are yeah. They Paul size? I didn't really take that into account because it doesn't actually matter for me. <laughs> <laughs> So, hmm. wait, we have like a two prong approach. I've always wanted to climb through an event. I that like, seems very, very like cool. Oh my gosh. Her, so, we could have. Hedgehog's trying to say something, but I can't hear her. We could oh, do no. a two prong approach, Hedgehog, and that would hmm. possibly work with you and Jonah Mox going through the vents and me and Paul going through the front. Our That's combined charisma could handle it, most definitely. Uh, 
about that, Paul. Um, I trust you. I believe in your abilities. And as every good leader should, I trust you to be capable. But why don't you let me take the lead on this one for the talking part. And then if it gets uh, dicey, you stand in front of them while they try to hit me. Hmm. Seems like a good plan. Wait, oh, run, I trust your leadership. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Run, wait, run that by me again. Just real quick. <laughs> okay, so real quick, two-prong approach. Me and Paul approach from the front, do some talky-talky. You and Lady Hedgehog slink in through the grates, and we meet up at the end of the corridor. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that way, if one of us fails, the, the other, other one still group, has a chance. Exactly, and they can get the jump on them. Okay. I mean, that that works for a, that's a plan for me. I'm I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to do what you say and fulfill the mission. And I I would never just take as much high tech gear from this place as I can to fit back on the ship. On oh, the way we home. will take everything we can. Everything. I am. Sorely lacking in some very essential tools. And this place has a tech level that I could probably get behind. I could probably find a matter cutter on board of this thing, man. Hmm. Yeah. Man, it's easy going, baby. Hedgehog, is that a good plan with you? Well, I mean, if it succeeds, it, it was, after all, my plan. It was definitely your plan. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I think we can kick this uh, show off then. Why don't we approach the front and that will hopefully cause enough of a distraction that you guys can go to the vents. And start climbing on through. Mm -hmm. Works for me. All right. All right. So you guys go do the talking and me and Hedgehog will do the work. Yep. Pretty much. Sounds good. But, but then we'll meet up. We'll meet up. and Right. Work, and then I'll split. sneak the rock person and the flashy gunman. He's a bodyguard. To our, yeah, I a bodyguard. have complete confidence in this plan. I estimate a 110% success rate. Now is that an actual run math, math mathematical equation or? A... <laughs> That's a lot of percents. That is like more than I thought were possible, mm -hmm. but you're so, the scientist, not me. Uh, You'll see behind me, I've got a blackboard full of equations I've been writing down mm. this whole time, estimating the planned success rate. We're sitting at 110% right now. You can't lie with the Could map. you angle that down for me? I'm having difficulty seeing it from, well, its height. Oh, 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 red. oh of course, of course. Thank you. Is, is, is that better? Yeah, I mean, it's uh. complete gibberish to me, but I, I appreciate being included. <laughs> Of course. You catch that word? Oh, before we get any further, uh, it looks like uh, we had an item purchased in the store, a uh, a confidential. Someone wanted to hear from Jonah Mox. A confessional, yeah. Someone wanted to hear from uh, Jonah Mox. Uh, Can we give that a minute? To I'm about to, uh, as we're not actually there yet, uh, I can't hear anything Helen is saying. Ah, okay. Oh. I've been trying to let you know on the down low, but I know you're uh, putting us together for this, so... So, um, yeah, we need to be able to hear each other. Problem. Do you want me to pop out? <laughs> um, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll let Mark make that decision. Yeah, try to tell the French option out so we can get Okay. All right. Okay. I like trying things. Yeah. All right. So, let's please bear with us for more audio difficulties here on uh, The Real Liables. Same bad time. So, are we having Helen go and come back? Yeah, that's why she's frozen on the screen. Oh. Oh, she's gone now. I miss her. No. Well, Paul, so my plan is this. You remain mostly silent and look like yourself. I will let them know that I... Um, Colonel John Stone, am here for an inspection of <laughs> uh, extra dimensional beings, and I have my subject matter expert with me. So if they ask you anything, just 
respond with stuff. I don't know. That's not my, that's not my strong okay. suit. You can just show them, bring a little blackboard, just put it in their face. Just say, math, I need to see these things. Math, I need to see these things. See, and that I don't even very, understand. And, I mean, I believe me. Hedgehog, you with Sounded. me? I am here. I hear you. Mm. Oh, thank goodness. And I really appreciate your dedication to actually hearing me as opposed to just ignoring me through the whole of our mission. Uh, yeah, that's not really my thing. If I've got to work with people, I might as well work with people, you know? It's just nice to know that somebody else thinks that what I have to say is important. What you have to say is important. You're a princess that makes you automatically important by birth, right? You're officially my favorite. I knew it. <laughs> that's all I really want. I just want to be recognized as being someone's favorite. Thank you for that uh, gratification. I needed it. Here we so, are with the mutual gratification. You and me are going to sneak around in some vents. Does that sound okay to you? It was my idea and I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Of course it was your idea. I uh, somehow <laughs> let that go right over my head when I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to remind everybody it was my idea until it goes wrong, in which case it was no longer my idea. All right, so tell me about these vents, James. Well, uh, vents is a strong word, but there are uh, definitely access systems. An interesting thing about something as large and old as this uh, Gamma 6 space station, as additional parts to it have been added and added and added again over centuries of its continued development. So there is a lot of areas of it and places within the station that uh, are simply unknown or part of where old facilities were and are now hopefully unoccupied. But that does mean that there are a variety of uh, strange uh, architectural design patterns built into such a place that at one point was simply several no longer functioning starships that got welded together and has grown and grown for centuries since. That's okay. That can get us there, I think. Fair enough. Uh, are we going to start with the people trying to talk their way in or those trying to walk their way in? Uh, talk, hopefully, to provide a distraction. That was my thought. All right. So tell me about this approach of yours that you have in mind, Victor Ains. I mean, you have a, a fairly secure entrance to this uh, section of the space station. Rather than being, you know, open and like its own independent building, it is simply an entire section of the mm. station with a massive checkpoint built in front of it, little security points, scanners, surveillance cameras, and multiple armed guards. And you can tell they're of the corporate kind because they're wearing those horrible, horrible suits that are made from like that armored weave fibers. Mm. So they looks like they're wearing a suit, but really they're wearing body armor. The little wire <laughs> from the earpiece coming down from them. They uh, standard issue sunglasses, even though they're in space on a space station. And uh, they're <laughs> indoors. Well, they uh, all have the same crew cut. Ugh, gross. So uh, I'm going to walk up like I belong here. I'm in charge, actually. They don't realize it yet, but I'm going to strut up with Paul right behind me, his shadow looming over me, if there's a shadow, and just walk up to the first grunt, like the youngest looking grunt I could see and approach him. That, that, that's far enough. This is a restricted area. You're damn right it's a restricted area. What's your name, Private? Uh, 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 we, uh, exactly. Just give me your badge. God. <laughs> <sighs> when I come here for inspections, I want promptness. I was expected. Maybe not by you, P-Brain, but I was told there would be a guide here. We, and I point up at Paul, do not have time for this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need an intimidation check from uh, Vector Reigns. Cool. So what's your intimidation dice you happen to have there? I've got no intimidation. Oh, so you're at a D4 minus two and your D6 wild die. Let's see how well we can do with this. Oh boy. <laughs> Ooh, mm. 
Mm. You're going to have a one or a zero on those. Uh, we're we're going to roll a Benny on that one. All right. Use yeah. it a Benny. Go ahead and roll Do you that have any time. persuasion at least? Hey, that's six aced. Hey. And it aced again. What? Hey. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. Even with a minus two, we are looking oh. at a 19 <sighs> on that intimidation. Mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> Now, this uh, poor guy that you are berating nearly loses his control of his bladder as you are yelling at him, and his face just drains completely of blood. He fumbles out a badge from within his coat and hands it over to you. Uh, uh, sir, they, 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 they didn't tell us you were coming. Sir, I, I'm sorry, I, sir. I, 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 uh, 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 snatch sir, the badge. Uh, and uh, I, it's okay. I'm sorry. This is just the second time it's happened here, and I'm getting tired of this slipshod thing you're running. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good job. You're good at your post. I appreciate the work you're doing. We're going to be on our way. If you could radio ahead so we don't get stopped again, that would be much appreciated. I would hate to have to put this on my report. Would, would, you, uh, would you like an escort, sir? Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. I, I'll go with you, sir. Excellent. Well, let me lead you in. And you enter the secure corporate facility. <laughs> Very well done, Vector Range. Let's uh, check in with uh, Jonah Mox and Princess Hedgehog. I assume we're all radioed up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, you want me to confessional? Ooh. I would love to hear yes. a, uh, from a reliable source of a confessional from Jonah Mox. So, uh, all in all, the plan wasn't terrible. I mean, we're playing to our strengths, right? We don't have superhero John Stone with us, so we gotta go about this in a smarter fashion. So, so the captain takes the rock person and they just go up and he acts like he's their boss. Now, meanwhile, me and Princess Hedgehog are trying to climb into a vent, which, by the way, uh, vent walls do not accommodate taffeta the way you think they might. So immediately the complaining starts. I knew things were going downhill from this point forward. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. Thank you very much for that. And thank you, chat, for uh, that purchase in our store. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to need you to start out with a, a thievery roll to try and locate the right access point that won't just lead you completely in the wrong direction. All right, that'll be a D10 and a D6. I get a plus one. That's right, you do. You happen to be a thief. Oh, that's six aces. That oh, man. Ace. Oh, oh okay, so we good. can have an, an I'll eight take or the a pen. ten. All right, a 10. A 10 is enough to get yourself a raise, almost two raises. And so uh, in you go picking the perfect access point. You even find one that isn't so horribly cramped for Princess Hedgehog. Because, well, you know, she is uh, small, or they are small, excuse me. Uh, they they still have the a physical body that can't just turn into liquid or gas like your own and ignore any type of thing that is blocking the path as you go right. along. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll 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 slip right up there and uh, like unscrew the little uh, ports for her and, and and give her a boost up. I'll be real gentlemanly about it. <laughs> uh, my plan, if that's okay with you, uh, Princess, mm -hmm. uh, what I'd like to do is we we go in, we get just past that checkpoint, and then I'm gonna drop you down back into the hallway. Uh, hopefully. The rest of our party will be there. If not, just walk through the place like you own it. I'll be shadowing you the whole way. Anybody gives you any trouble, try and talk your way out of it. If they don't look like they're going to buy it, I'll make sure they're unconscious by the time they try anything with you. Perfect. Wonderful. I excel at being regal. Great. And I excel at being sneaky. So let's use these two things together, shall we? Absolutely. Well, then. Ladies Excellent. Now, Princess is first. Through... The whole of this, I am, of course, going to talk because there is very little stealth in my life. Um, and it's it's going to 
go a little something like, people don't really know this about me, um, but uh, I'm actually considered very uh, agile for my species. My species being kind of, well, we're related to fungus. And you would think that a fungus would have like, you know, a little bit more, but we're rooted people. Red we're test. rooted people. Yes? Look, I, I am really interested in this story. Like... More oh, good. Well, then yeah. I will continue. But um, there we're was in a vent and it'll echo. And if there's creatures in this vent that might be carnivorous or uh, vermin related, they're going to come this way if they hear us. So if we could just keep it like at a, at a, a stage whisper, I think we could probably, uh, you know, I you do love you. vermin. Oh my God. Have we ever talked we, about how much I love vermin? We have. I think we should probably do that favorite. sometime. Oh my God, maybe it is. Oh, that makes so much sense. Oh, Jonah Mox, I just feel like we've really connected. Me too, me too, this is great. <laughs> I'm gonna lower you down now, okay? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, do be careful though. Please be careful, I don't love heights. I mean, I, I, I'm i fine with them. You just like, hold onto my arms and I'll stretch <laughs> them down to the bottom of the floor. It'll be like you're holding oh, okay. onto, you know, ropes with hands and fingers. <laughs> Uh, and I'm suddenly need a... I'm a lot less uh, comfortable. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a shape change roll on that yeah. to make myself stretchy so I can be more uh, pliable to lower to the ground easily. That Absolutely. way also, if I do fail the athletics test on that, I can fall to the ground and use myself to break her fall. Oh. All right, give me a focus uh, test on that. What do you have for focus? Uh, eight. John? All right, D8 and a D6 wild die. <laughs> the big time critical failure. Oh, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> oh no! I, I turned to goo all right, but I immediately like <laughs> fall through the slats yes. of the vent, and now she's stuck on the other side of it, and I'm a puddle on the floor in the hallway. Ah, uh, yes, but see, uh, it is actually rather well, uh, perfect comedically timed because uh, as a critical failure means that something terrible has to happen, and so uh, your your timing was just a bit off, and not only does Princess Hedgehog slip from your grip to uh, land down in the hallway, but then you completely oozify yourself in the process of stretching and splatter all over the face of a very terrified security escort for uh, Vector Reigns and Paul, who happened to be in the hallway at this present moment. Oh, and man. with a shriek of terror, he triggers the alarm. Uh -oh. I take so full responsibility for this. Well, <laughs> well, new plane, everyone. Get to the object. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, we're going to quickly start with uh, the fun part in Savage Worlds for me, and that's when we deal out those initiative cards to see what happens next. So let's see. Go to the Give me good initiative. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember, you know, if you don't like the card you're drawn, you have drawn, you can spend one of those bennies to uh, get yourself a different card. And there are two friends with benefits in the communal pool that Chad has already purchased for you. All right. Ooh. Let's see what we got. Oh, playing cards. Huh. I owe. Wow. Hey, there we go. Sevens. Those are all very similar cards, and all are Dang. acting before our uh, very terrified, irate uh, security guard. And it looks like the seven of, is that spades you spades. have out there, Tarnamox? Yeah. Spades <laughs> goes before hearts or diamonds. So let's start it off with yourself, Tarnamox. Okay, since, you I, since I am unfortunately in a liquid form instead of the putty form I was hoping for, I don't have a lot of fighting options right now. Uh, but I am going to try and force myself down that man's throat. Oh, Ooh. boy. Uh, I, I didn't know we were that kind Consent of show. Consent is key. Consent is key. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, all right. I, you know, in uh, the case of this, uh, I can't see another role that applies more than uh, athletics in this uh, instance. So I'm going to need an athletics test from you. Okie doke. That'll be a D. Is that an eight or a 10? I got to take a look. Hold on. Momentarily, guys. 10. 
All right, a D10 and a D6 wild die, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Not having a great day Oof. today, guys. Oof. No. <laughs> I'm not Oof. having a super yeah. good time with these rolls. Uh, it's not a critical failure, so you can use a Benny. Yeah, I think I will, actually. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to mess up that many times in a row. Hey, there we go. That that, that looks way better. Eight. I'll All take right. That. What's his parry? Uh, uh, well, in this particular instance, as he has not gotten a chance to uh, act within the initiative round, you technically have the drop, making that a 12 rather than an 8. And uh, so you have exceeded uh, his parry and then gotten a raise on top of that. So uh, you are very much physically, from the inside, strangling this security guard in a fashion that I am deeply, deeply uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not really comfortable with it either, but uh, I don't actually have to feel that in real life. Um, yes. So uh, so he begins to uh, choke and gag, and to the rest of you, it is a fairly disturbing sight to see as he clutches at his mouth, nose, and throat, and a liquid Jonamox is oozed into him. Oh my, that is uncomfortable. And uh, Paul, with a seven of hearts, you're gonna get to act next. Okay, so I want to approach the alarm that was just set off, and I want to see if I can either shut it off or send some sort of mm, reverse cancel, belay that kind of signal through the uh, station, depending on what? the functionalities available. Nice. What is your hacking skill? Uh, six. All right, a D6 and a D6 wild die. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I'm, sp I'm spending a penny. Penny, <laughs> penny, <laughs> time. Yep. Much yeah, better. Right. A five right is now. enough for yeah. a success. And so is a four in this case, too. But uh, good enough that you are able to get in there. And while you've canceled the alarm, you know that it went off for a few seconds. So you're not sure what that response will be. But you did shut it off with a proper code. So hopefully that will curtail any response or make it at least slightly less aggressive and immediately hostile. As okay. accidents and drills do, in fact, happen. And that's going go to that'll go to Vector Reigns with the Seven of Diamonds next. Uh, is there any sort of intercom system with this warning bell alarm? Uh, not built into the alarm system, but you are pretty sure, judging by the wire and earpiece mm -hmm. hanging down from the uh, now having difficulties with Jonah Mox security personnel, that they are using some form of comm system. Okay. Uh, is, um, he, is, is our guy considered grappled? <laughs> yes, he absolutely is considered grappled. I just wanted to make sure that was the effect that happened. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. I'd call that grappling, yeah. yeah so, he's very much grappled. I'm going to get this guy's uh, radio and look for any sort of ID that he has. And You've already want... examined it before. Okay. So I want to put over the intercom the piece that... <sighs> Johnson here made a mistake again. Keeps messing up. This was just a drill, folks. It wasn't supposed to go off right now. It was supposed to be going off. Tomorrow at night. And in the background, Chewbacca goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will take a persuasion roll from you. What do you have for persuasion? Persuasion, I have a D6. All right, a D6 and a D6 wild die. What do we get? Oh, man. So I'm very charismatic, and that allows me to re-roll a persuasion roll as long as it's not a critical failure. Oh, man. So you get the re-roll <laughs> out the Benny? Wow. That's just unfair. And a five is enough to get yourself a success. That's a confirm on the drill, Agent Johnson. Uh, Johnson. Wow. Hang up. <laughs> And that then takes us to uh, Princess Hedgehog. Oh. I mean, as far as I can tell, we're in the clear, right? Seems to be, uh, you know, other than uh, the gagging, choking, not doing so well. Sure, 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 sure. Um, I mean, I feel like speed is going to be of the essence here. Um, and I have a sloth speed ability that I think I would like to impart to my three 
cohorts, as long as one of you is willing to carry me. Paul. I mean, yeah, no, uh, 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 without hesitation. I, I can't talk when I'm down somebody's mm. throat, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will carry you. I couldn't talk when you were down their throat. Thank you. I'm really um, excited to see what it looks like all the way from the top. All right. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to uh, cast speed on everyone so we can get the fuck out of Dodge. All right. What is your spell casting die? Uh, 12. All right. A D12 and a D6 for the uh, wild die. Oh, I cannot see yep. what the result is, though. Uh, I think they're working on that. Okay. Come on. Big number. Okay. Uh, yeah. those small numbers. There it is. Okay. A oh, it's got an ace six, oh man. And <laughs> another ace. Wow, that's a 14. A 14. Ooh. So, uh, power point spent. And what are the effects of speed? Uh, target space is doubled. So, uh, we're all going twice as fast. Uh, wow. on a, are, are we on a raise? We raised. You're a raise as well. Yeah, that is. Yeah. On a, <laughs> on a raise, the target ignores the uh, minus two penalty of uh, two rolls when taking the run action. Wow. So there everyone can run full speed uh, without any kind of penalty. That's uh, pretty dang fantastic. Uh, we, of course, get to the last oh. of the round is uh, the three for the choking, gagging security personnel who has this one chance to attempt to somehow try to dislodge a liquid Jonamox before he passes out. Um, I, I am going to give him a vigor test to attempt to do so, but because you're liquid, he's going to have to do so at a two-point penalty because, well, he basically has to force himself to vomit to remove you from his throat, and that might not even guarantee it. So I'll take a D6 minus two. He has no wild die as he is not a wild card. Oh, and with the zero, he is not going to be able to uh, cough up Jonamox, and in Ooh. fact, passes out. <laughs> I'm going to prop his body up so it looks like he was just sleeping on the job instead of yes. unconscious dead. Oh, uh, can I, I, I would like to uh, reform myself. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> to normal uh, after I lift him up and stick him up through the Ooh. grate. That we, oh. that we just drop down oh. from. Mox, you are good okay. at the stealth thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to make a shape change roll for this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's try not to I think, I've made, I think I've made six of those in three episodes, and I've failed five of them. So. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the All right. Change. Wow. That's uh, a D8 and a D6, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Which, right. which should mean I occasionally succeed, but... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, this might be one of those times. All right. Both of those are good enough. So a six is a success, and you are able to place him up in the event that you just popped out of and dropped Princess Hedgehog Ooh. through. Closing right. the vent back up and retaking your form. Okay. So, so, team. That was all on purpose. It was well yeah. done, Jonah Mox. As well as Paul and L Lady Hedgehog. Well, well done. But I believe the time for stealth has passed. Um, we're pretty quick, and I think we got to get going to get this creature, whatever it is. You know, we're, we're still going to want to try and keep quiet as much as possible. Otherwise, we have to start fighting here and fight the whole way there. Uh, oh, that's but, fine. I'm great at being quiet. But I actually I'm pretty sure we can all move quiet. pretty fast right now, so let's do that. Just move towards the objective. I'll scout slightly ahead since I can move so much faster. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I'll, I just, and I'll stay hidden if I can. Yep, I'm going to need a stealth roll from you scouting ahead, Jonah Mox. What is your stealth? Oh, many. Uh, let's take a look, yeah. Stealth, 10. All right, and you get a plus one to those stealth tests. So we're going to have a six as the highest roll. So we're going forward pretty sneakily along the Ooh. corridor wall as quiet and quickly as you can with this incredible speed benefit you've all gained from princess hedgehog you are all really <laughs> moving 
It is Puzzle. impressive. Yeah, you are covering uh, I'm like the ground. Perched on Paul's <laughs> shoulders with like yeah. the wind in my hair, just doing the <laughs> I'm on top of the world. Uh, I just want to point out Paul is like at least 900 pounds and moving very fast right now. So <laughs> I'm not sure how this stealth is going. Not to shoot myself in the foot, but I mean. That is why uh, Jonah Box is scouting ahead. Mm -hmm. It will give you a slight advantage in this particular case. Uh, you reach a couple of different points where corridors branch off and you have to make assumptions of which way to go. But thankfully, Jonah Max, you have a long history of uh, breaking into secure facilities and liberating items from said secure facilities. Right. And also, if I see anything of value on the way, do let me know. <laughs> <laughs> And so you are uh, very much able... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say before we get into uh, another round of action, just heads up, y'all. Uh, your multi-action penalty is also reduced by this quickness. <laughs> so okay. before we forget that, y'all yeah. got multi-action penalty. Or, uh, yes, y'all have... Uh, yeah, um, the multi-action penalty. And you're welcome. How long does this last? It's well, it's a five round spell initially, so uh, okay. we're going to be using up some of those in this initial movement through, and then we'll see what exactly happens. It's all going to depend on uh, some of Jonah Mox's choices. Uh, leading the path through, you pass through a couple of different branches off and corridors, and down through where you think you're getting to the more secure heart of the facility. And in fact, as you reach a corner, you are fairly certain, as there is another set of very stout doors, a second security checkpoint. This time, this time the guards aren't in those uh, fancy suits with the armor weave, but in full legitimate body armor, head to foot, and large, powerful looking rifles. And they look very alert. And there, of course, are the signs all along the doorway that say, restricted area, authorized access only. Uh, and there's two of these big dudes? There are four currently <laughs> guarding the entrance. All right. Um, well, as I am being sneaky, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna quickly like, you know, do the hand up thing and hope everybody knows that that means stop, even though Jonah Mox isn't really sure that's what it means. <laughs> uh, he's gonna head back to the, the party. It's like, okay, there's a whole security detail up ahead. <laughs> but we might be able to bum rush him if we get around that corner fast enough. Uh, wait for my signal and then just come around. There's four of them. They're placed right here and here and here. You get what I'm saying? But they're heavy armored. So what do you say, boss? How about, well, I love that plan, Jonah Mox, and I think it's great. What if, <laughs> since our friend Johnson should have radioed ahead and let him know that myself, Captain John Stone, and my large friend Paul were coming, let's walk up, talk to them, and then jump them with surprise while they're in the middle of a conversation. That All right, way... let me let me let me go check real quick. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they're still in the same spots, and I'll wave you forward when we're when we're clear. Sounds good. All right, uh, I go back up to the corner and kind of like peek around. Yep, they're All still right. there. All right, all right. I throw a grenade at them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I gotta uh, ask, are you just going to throw the grenade or are you going to cook the grenade so that they don't have a chance to oh, try Oh, I'm gonna cook the grenade and like try and get it right in between all of them so I can get, get that medium burst template and just, you know, like really. All right, so that means there'll be a minus two to the uh, athletics temp uh, as you're attempting to cook the grenade. Can we see That's him holding the grenade? No, no, I, I just literally whip yeah. it out. Yes. I look back. I look back at you as after I after I push the button on the grenade, give you a thumbs up, and toss it behind me. <laughs> That's very so good. What is that athletics of yours again? That's ten. All right, a D ten and a D six. You're at a minus two for the cooking. No. Oh, no. Benny. Benny Spence. <laughs> oh. oh no. Oh boy. Oh. Never in my life. R.I.P. Jonomox. <laughs> oh my. So, in fact, uh, you hold on to that grenade just a little too long, and uh, it goes off right next to you as uh. you're releasing it from your hand. 
So in fact, uh, poor Jonah Mox, you're going to take the damage on that particular grenade. <laughs> yep, big explosion. So let's do a, a 3d6 damage on Jonah Mox, please. That's probably for the best. Those those should all be ones too there. Dice roller guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, 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 no, that, that's going to be 20, so you might want to use one of those. Uh, uh, I I can, I'm going to reactively shape change too. Since <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, no. What absorbs explosions? Water? Oh, Unfortunately, air. So oh, hey. right. uh, because, because you're currently under the speed and have lost the multi action penalty, I will allow you to make the one single action. I'm going to spend a Benny for it, though. Okay. okay. I've got to spend a Benny for it, but yeah. Go ahead and give me that focus roll. So that's going to be a D8 and the D6 wild die. I will try, try but I no longer trust our dice roller. <laughs> 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 Look at that. What is that? <laughs> there are still two friends with benefits in the store. You can use one of those to re-roll that. Uh, yes, please. Don't I would die, like to not you die have from to. This. All yeah. right. One of those two is now used. That's a much better result. Uh, you get a 12 on that one for the success. Uh, and that is going to be more than enough. You uh, realize, just as the grenade is about to go off, watching the little indicator lights go down, that you held on to it for just a bit too long. Turning into a gas-like shape, the grenade then explodes. Of course, this completely ruins any surprise plan, and we're going to have to go straight into initiative cards for this. <laughs> A good, solid attempt, Jonah Mox, <laughs> but the dice are not on your side today. No, no, that I, I've gotten them. They've been screwing me. I, I think it's, Mark, it's Mark's fault. Mark did it. Yeah, I, sorry, I just, I just feel like now is a wonderful time to get. Vector Reigns' opinion on this situation. I really kind of <laughs> wish we had a from the reliable source. Just get that. And oh. then he started blasting. <laughs> I will point out I was slightly off on that count. There are actually still four friends with Benny Fitz in the store. So there's still oh, four right. available. Oh, okay. They bought some and uh we Yeah, we're not hearing the computer today. Sorry about yeah. that, folks. But yeah, those are all definitely in the store. These are some <laughs> great cards, and it looks like the uh, well, uh, we we have to redraw for Jonah Mox is he has to have better than a five, unfortunately. So if we can get one more card, yeah, you're not him. allowed to start the cat stack the cards and the dice again. <laughs> <laughs> we see Jonah Mox has the quick edge, which means that uh, results of five or less uh, are he gets a redraw on. No, you got to give me a different card. <laughs> a different number. Come <laughs> on, man. <laughs> All right, a 10 was better. Uh, and then it disappeared. There it is. A 10 is better. Still, it looks like the king of spades is going to be the first to go. And we're going to get Paul as the quickest to react from the terrible detonation of a grenade inside the corridor. Hold on. It looks like we've got, yep, oh, we've got a donation. Uh, fourth wall. Let's see how Vic Vector reigns. Thought, you basically got a confessional for Vector. Uh, All right, a confessional for Vector Reigns. I think it's the perfect time to hear about that before we get chat. rolling in some and some mm -hmm. dice. I really want to know what Vector thinks about what just happened. <laughs> you go in. You think you have a plan. You say, "Here's the plan." They say, "Let's do the plan." Then they don't do the plan. What are you gonna do? <sighs> but don't worry about it. I'm here, I can pick up the pieces. No matter if he drops them at his feet, in the air. There's nothing to be worried about everybody. Vector Reigns is on watch. <sighs> Some confidence from oh, Vector Reigns there. Good. Some big time confidence there. I felt like Vector was watching a different fight than I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what Paul's got. I feel got like. Okay, so 
Paul's been uh, kind of clocking the the architecture of this whole uh, building as as they journey through it, kind of uh, intuitively and um, what's the word I'm thinking about? Deductively, figuring out where all the power lines, the the gas lines, the uh, just the various bits where things in the wall probably are, where where it's a likelihood he might they might be able to find something. Uh, so Paul is just going to very casually and deliberately punch through the wall and around the corridor at a very specific point to just get a whole bunch of gas and like um, cover uh, shooting out into the hallway. Nicely done. Uh, yeah. that, that's a brilliant plan. I'm going to want an athletics test from you to break through that wall. Okay, that's an eight. All right, a D8 and a D6 from Paul for the athletics test. And because he's got no multi-action penalty, I'll also take the, uh, I think an academics test is in order for the picking the right spot yep. and the right place. So we have a success on the athletics. What's your academics? A 10 plus two. Oh man, a D10 plus two and a D6 wild die. Let's see how these end up. Oh, two perfect successes. You know mm. right where to go, breaking through in the perfect spot on the wall. It's less of a punch through and more casually just putting your hand completely through the wall, grabbing the right tube, pulling it open, and just pumping a bunch of gas out into the hallway, completely obscuring vision and perhaps keeping you and your companions a little safer from what's about to come. Oh, my God. And I believe Excellent. that's going to be Princess Hedgehog with the King of Diamonds next. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do I need to protect my people from the blast or is that we're okay? No, the explosion was yeah further ahead. Uh, Jonah Mox, okay. or, yeah, Jonah Mox was the only one at risk of that grenade explosion having done the scout ahead. Great, oh boy, perfect. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> uh, I am going to... Uh, uh, am I close enough to use Havoc? Uh, you don't have a sight line, so you're going to want to get up to where Jonah Mox is to use a Havoc, which means you'd be losing the benefit of that cover that Paul just supplied. But you could very well yeah, easily do so. All right. Well, you know, uh, devil may care. I think I'm capable of just about anything, um, even when I'm not. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna run up, and I'm going to cast Havoc. Um which is going to create mischief and scatter objects. Uh, hopefully, in this case, those objects are um, uh, are, are bad guys in suits. Uh, not a bad idea. And I also uh, will point out that because you're still affected by speed, you could use your second action to return back to Paul and get the cover of that <laughs> after casting Havoc. Because, yeah. well, you're on the effect of your own enhanced speed capabilities. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I did speed and now I'm all right, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna Shoot out, cast havoc, run back and be like, Mr. Valk, will you save me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need your spell casting roll first. What do you have for spell casting? Because that's a D12, isn't it? That is a D12. A D12 Watch as it epically fails. Guy. Ooh, an eight is a oh, success great. with a raise. So uh, they're going to have a penalty of two on any of their tests to try and hold their ground. So I'm going to need four separate D8 strength tests by these individuals to try and hold their ground, all at a two-point penalty. So if we can get four eight-sided dice rolled, I would appreciate it. All right. Oh, we've got some good rolls in there. Uh, with the minus the rolling. Yeah, you can tell those weren't Jonah Mox rolls. With the minus two, <laughs> with the minus two we're going to have a four, four, and a five. So uh, on the bad side, only one of them is hurled off the ground and into the nearby wall. Three of them holding their place. However, the one that is hurled into the wall, because they couldn't stop before imp impacting that wall, they take 2d4 damage as well. So we get two four-sided dice roll damage to see if he is actually hurt. And the four aces, it might be even more. Oh. Oh. Aces again. Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. What? Oh. Wow. Oh, 
joke? That's a, that's how it is. Joe that guy Marks. is dead. Uh, yeah, so uh, what would be just a slight <laughs> only bump, especially in such heavily uh, heavy body armor as this guy is wearing, ends up being a terribly jarring impact, which uh, breaks his neck from the awkward <laughs> angle, uh, instantly <laughs> killing him outright. Mm. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. on, when While the others did succeed and were able to hold their ground because of the effect of Havoc, they will all count as distracted for their turn, which is next, meaning they're at a minus two to any of their actions. Uh, and so this particular case, two of them will breach the corner and attempt to fire at the group, while one of them will attempt to fire at Jonah Mox. The two attempting to fire at the group are targeting Paul because he is gigantic and scary looking. Uh, unfortunately, Paul has supplied gas, giving even more coverage, so their shooting tests will be at a total of minus four on their attempts to strike Paul. So if I can get two shooting tests at a D8, both of them at minus four. Ouch. Uh, a three and a minus one are just not going to be able to hit Paul. Between the gas and the distraction from Havoc, yeah. it's not going to work. And then one more D8. This one's only at minus two because Jonah Mox isn't gaining the benefit of the cover from the gas just yet. But Jonah Mox did turn himself to air. So though while he oh. is being shot at with a three, it can't really do a whole lot to him and passes through a cloud of gas, striking the wall where he was a moment ago. And that's going to put us to Jonah Mox. Hey, all right. Uh, I'm going to going to try and shape change myself into my super solid form. <laughs> <laughs> shape change. My, uh, ar my, super, basically super my, solid. Yeah, my armored form, basically. All right. Uh, see, if, see if I can actually get into fighting shape. All right, that'll be a D8 and a D6. Because you've got the speed benefit, you're not going to take a multi-action penalty. Wow, that... Uh, that aces and you get yourself a nine, you get a raise, making a perfect enhanced solid form. Uh, it's more solid in all the right places to protect any potential harm points. And for that second action of yours, what you have in, in, in mind? Oh, I'm gonna just stab one of those guys right through himself. I'm gonna stab two of those guys right through themselves. All right, so that actually makes that a seven, so it's still a success for the shape change. And then we're going to do two fighting rolls. What is your fighting? Uh, it is 12. Ouch. And you're using a knife, right? So that's a plus one because of the trademark weapon. So even with the three actions, multi-action penalty, that's still going to be a seven succeeding on the first one. And then the second one will be another one of those same rolls. That will be a six on the second one, which is just enough. Uh, these trained guards are more trained to use rifles than hand-to-hand -hand combat, so parry is not a very strong skill for them. So those are two successful hits. What kind of damage do you do with a knife, gentlemen? Uh, let me take a look. Sorry, it's been a week. Awesome. There we go. So, D8 plus D6 plus 2. Excellent. Am I reading that right? I think I am. All right. So, a D8 plus a D6 plus 2 for victim Oof. number one, the dice aces. Wow. And we're going to get a 20 uh, damage hit overall. And once more, immediately down, you find the perfect opening in that suit of armor and stab your knife right through as you have done many the, times. The armor. neck. <laughs> this, I'm, a, I'm a neck guy. <laughs> yep. And stab that one of the neck, and I'll take one more of those damage rolls for the second attack, please. Same, same. Same, same. The D8 and the D6. So one more time. Ten. This time with a 10, it is not enough to inflict any significant damage beyond that armor, but you are going to get a shaken result on that opponent. So they are still in a little bit of pain, but they are not out of it just yet. Jonah Box. Nicely done, Jonah Box. Vector Reigns, what have you got for us? Let's see. So there's one dude kind of shaken and one dude just sitting there. Or standing uh, you've got two that are firing down the hallway that shot at Paul that are, you know, uh, 
well, excuse me, one fighting down the hall that, and he's acceptable and not hurt. And then one that is fighting close to Jonah Mox that uh, just got stabbed in the neck. Okay. He's not down, but he's been stabbed. So you've got two opponents left to deal with. I'm going to pull out my pistols and shoot them. Both of them? Both of them, in fact. Uh, and because I'm a two-gun kid, I've got two pistols. I'm going to shoot two at the guy shooting at uh, me and Paul. And then two at the one that Jonah Mox is entangled with. Don't shoot right. my hair, bro. I'll work on it. <laughs> you can shape it back, oh. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, I two, the two gun kid ability will uh, subtract the multi action penalty from doing that off the first one. And then the speed subtracts a multi action penalty from the second action. So you are going to make four shots only at a minus two. That is uh, pretty impressive to be able to pull the trigger four times at only a minus two. What is your shooting roll? Uh, my shooting roll is a D10. All right, so we've got a D10 and a D6 wild die going with a minus two, and we're going to have a six that succeeds. Let's see what happens with the second one. I'm going to use a Benny on that bad roll. You're going to get Benny to re-roll that one. Um, Ooh, not going to do it. You want to use another Benny? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Another Benny used. There we go. There we go. That one will succeed. We still got two more to make. Two more on the other guy, though, right? Yep. The second target. Ooh, you want to uh, use a Benny on that one? Um, no. I'll let that one look real bad. Let that one miss. All right. And the last one. That one I'll use a Benny, Benny on. on I'll All use right, a Benny on that Benny. one. All right. All right, so you're going to have three successful hits in a lot of it. You did actually manage to miss once. I believe this is the first time Vector Reigns has missed anything that he's shot at, as far as uh, any of you have ever seen. I and saw him gonna... glance off his armor. That's what I saw. That's right. It was ah. a distracting shot. Yeah. So well, what kind of damage do those weapons of yours do? Uh, Unfortunately, none of those was a raise, so they're just going to be standard damage. Uh, 3d8. 3d8. Wow, so each one of those. That first one, not a lot of damage, but you did shoot him twice. Let's see how the second shot did. That is a little bit better. You're going to get a shaken result on that one. And then our third target, who's already shaken. What do we get on him? Oh, man, that eight aces. <laughs> and, oh, that is a perfect shot. The poor guy gets stabbed in the neck by John Amox and then shot in the chest by Vector Reigns <laughs> and killed. <laughs> what a poor schlub on that one. Mm. All right, we're going to go into another round of initiative cards. There is only one enemy left, and uh, things aren't going all that well for him as he is already shaken. Ugh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, and just a heads up, I can see nothing. Uh -oh. Anymore. Uh -oh. So if somebody can tell me what my card is. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, it's going to be easy because you're going to go first, Princess Hedgehog, with a jack of clubs. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, all right. Great. So remind me, who is who is left? You have one enemy left, and they are already shaken from being hit by a shot by Vector Reigns. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, <laughs> um, I can't can hear I Princess direct Hedgehog. Paul, like grab his head and be like, you know, go stamp on this guy for me? Can I can You I can that? support Paul. That's a support action is something you can absolutely do and then try and convince him in such a fashion. You would make a persuasion role for that. And if you succeed, you would give Paul a plus two to his action. All right. Um, well, Paul, if you are amenable, uh, I'm going to try to persuade you that this is a great idea uh, with, by rolling a 10. All right. Give me a 10-sided dice for the persuasion roll for uh, Princess Hedgehog. I believe Paul can't hear Princess Hedgehog. Is that I, I, I didn't I didn't get any of that. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. Do you want me to back out and come back <laughs> in? <laughs> it's your turn, Paul. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, hang on on that one. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still hear me, Paul, but... Uh, I can hear you, yeah. All right, uh, yes, would you mind just very quickly, uh, Helen, backing out and coming back in and seeing how that solves the audio Absolutely. and video? Absolutely. Hmm. 
And another uh, audio video fail here on the reliables. Uh, the only yeah. thing we seem to be reliable for is audio and video difficulties and Jonah Mox not getting good dice rolls. Uh, that, that seems to be the, the, the reliable part of this show so far. We're reliable except for our audio and my dice rolls. I think that's... Yeah. Oh, we're getting a rating party from It's a Smalls World. Do you guys know who that is? That's Yay. one of our favorites. That's right. Lisa. Oh, Lisa, we love you so very much. Lisa, you can see her on, of course, It's a Smalls World, where she does all kinds of great streams. She's also a regular cast member on this very channel on Wednesdays for Void Jumpers. Oh, which uh, if you haven't checked out Void Jumpers, you really should. It is a really fun, really cinematic show with a great cast in it. Thanks for rating, guys. Uh, right now, we are in the midst of an uh, incursion combat, combat into a secure corporate facility where they are trying to liberate an extra-dimensional creature. And so far, things have not gone according to plan. Uh, can Paul hear Hedgehog? Can you hear me, buddy? I sure can. All right. All right. Yeah. Oh, Princess Hedgehog was attempting to support you by try, trying a persuasion role to try and give you a bonus on uh, your next action. So if she succeeds at her persuasion role, you can get a plus two on the next action you take that she's supporting. Oh, so she's, uh, she's trying to help you out there, Paul. So what is your persuasion again? You said it was a D10, I believe? My persuasion is a D10, yeah. And I D10. think... Uh, and the D6 wild die. And uh, that screen is hidden underneath the other screen at the <laughs> moment. So I didn't see that dice roll. So I'm not really sure what I got. I think, oh, we got a five there, which is a success. So you are, in fact, going to give a plus two bonus to Paul when it goes to his turn. Um, but there is, of course, that bad guy gets a chance before anybody else is going to get a shot to go unfortunately he's shaken so the first thing he has to do is attempt to make a spirit roll to pull out of that which is for him a flat d6 uh, unfortunately he's still distracted uh so it's at a minus two so that poor guy mm. has a really high uh goal to attempt to achieve so if you i believe get, in him perhaps you know, that would have been a success, but with the minus two involved, it's not. He's going to stay shaken. He doesn't get to act. He's just still dealing with being shot by Vector Reigns and terrified at the horrible, horrible death of his comrades. Now, I believe technically that, Jonamox, you would be next. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready, ready to go. Okay. Uh, now that I'm, you know... Since he's uh, still distracted and still shaken, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, Thank okay. Well, he is going to get uh, just the, the mightiest left cross that I have. I'm using my slam attack on him Oh, uh, that I have in this form. All right. So Give me a fighting test. Just to, just to basically body check him up against the wall as hard as I can. <laughs> That's going to be a fighting test. And I believe you got a, a D10 on that? D12 or D12? on that. I'm a, I'm a fighter's fighter. D12 and the D6. Oh. Okay, you know what? Uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark, you are rigging these dice what? again. <laughs> uh, what? There's nothing good about you, Mark. No. It's a conspiracy. Your whole family. Your whole family. Joe Mox, master of the critical. <laughs> I believe that's three in one episode. It setting is. an all-time new record. Uh, you you attempt to be getting bennies for these. <laughs> <laughs> you attempt yourself a great body Oof. check. You line up just right, and then he staggers forward, still hurt from Vector, and your throw is way off. And you shoulder check the wall very brutally, <laughs> very perfectly. Unfortunately, it's not nearly as unyielding as uh, you would hope it would be, and end up staring up at the ceiling on your back. Oh, I fell down too. Good. <laughs> it is a critical, so, and no. that's going to go to my ball. You know, Mark did this. Everyone <laughs> <does>. <laughs> so, Paul, you're getting supported by Princess Hedgehog mm. on this turn. Your action will be at a plus two bonus. She was hoping you would go over and stomp on this person, but I'm mm. leaving it up to you as to exactly how you want to uh, finish them off or disable them. 
So I've got one question, and it's very important. Is this Absolutely. the guy that shot at me, or was that someone else? He absolutely shot at you. Yeah. Paul is not a fan of violence, just as a rule. <laughs> However, and and Paul doesn't really mind getting shot at all that much. It's not like bullets do a whole lot. However, at that exact moment, Princess Hedgehog was on my shoulder. Ooh. So... Paul is going to terminate her walk over to this guy and <laughs> grab his gun out of his hands, kind of like uh, that one part in Doom Eternal, if, if anyone played that. <laughs> and um, just uh, very slowly shove, just give the guy a, a firm shove over. <laughs> That's about yeah. as hardcore as Paul gets. <laughs> All right, Paul, I'm going to need a uh, athletics test from you on that push. What have you got for athletics? That's an eight. All right, a D8 and the D6 wild die. You get a plus two bonus. <laughs> mm. uh, what do I got left for bennies? Unfortunately, you cannot spend oh, a Benny yeah. for a critical what? failure. <laughs> Is it still a critical failure with the uh, plus two? Unfortunately, a critical failure is when both dice come up a one and there is nothing that can be done to stop that. In the most oh boy. humorous fashion, uh, you move forward to take this gun. And at that moment, he is stepping backwards, still staggering, and nearly trips over Jonah Mox. And so, in fact, you reach forward, grabbing nothing but air. And mm. your push is actually the classic schoolyard bully trick where a person gets behind someone and you push them over, except you're facing forward and tripping over Jonah Mox and landing face first on the ground. And with that, we just got another uh, tip from chat. Another two more confessionals about the situation. One <laughs> for Paul and one for Princess Hedgehog. As <laughs> they oh, watch man. what's happening. I, I think we need to hear from both of those. And I think because of what just happened, we should probably hear from Paul first. Yeah. A reliable source, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Jack. So, uh... I just spent a week trying to figure out how Princess Hedgehog's magic works. Long uh, story short, it doesn't uh, at all. I, uh, I'm i not unfamiliar with magic. I've studied it. It's kind of like science, only magical. Princess Hedgehog, her magic defies all understanding. It's like completely inexplicable and it obeys different rules that I'm familiar with with and after a week of trying to reconcile what i've observed about her magic and her nature i've come to the conclusion that she must occupy the role of some sort of deity in this universe by virtue of the system that she's from so I've decided to treat her like a minor goddess and protect and exalt her at every opportunity. So when she gets shot at, I get a little peeved and sometimes I have to use my big voice and push a guy over. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is all source. And now Princess Hedgehog. Now I very deeply appreciate what Paul tries to do. I really, really do. I mean, he is a moving mountain after all. I just, I gave up an opportunity here. I don't think anybody really realizes that I might be one of the most valuable members of the team. I mean, after all, I had the opportunity right there and then to march up to this guy and finish it all myself, but I really am just so generous. So I thought I'd give that opportunity to Paul, you know, after all, moving mountain, walk over, stomp, 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 crush a guy's head, and we could laugh about it. And I could be like, oh, thank you. And that's why you don't mess with the hedgehog and the Paul, you know, and like have a little celebratory moment. But then 
I don't know. I just don't know what happened. Just, you know, I, I, I grabbing air and falling over. And it just, I just wish that my selflessness could have been better rewarded. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a reliable source there. Thank you so much, Chad, for that. And uh, with that, we will go to Vector Reigns, who will finish us out for the round. Vector Reigns, what are you going to do? So this guy's oh, on the man. ground. Paul and Jonah Mox have tripped over each other and are on the ground. And this one guy is just staggering back and forth, somehow inexplicably not being hit by everything that happened around him. Can, with, with, uh, since I'm extra fast, can I just get like right next to him and just execute him? Uh, well, speed has now ended at this point, oh, okay. but you can very easily close that distance and uh, shoot him at point blank range. Yep. Absolutely. That's my plan. Are you going with one, or are you still using your gun kit to shoot both guns? Um, I will use both in case one goes uh, haywire. Apparently, that it's in this area. It seems to be happening. Yeah. Uh, so, what's that shooting test of yours at, anyway? So it is a D10 plus one, unless right. uh, because I get plus one to shooting roll because I am a marksman. Ah, excellent. So we're going to have a four on that first one, which is enough to succeed. And then the second shot. That <laughs> one is seven. So you both of those shots at close range are uh, going to succeed. And each one of those is going to be a 3d8 damage shot. So if we can get 3d8 rolled for the damage on this poor guy twice in a row. The first one, not so hot. <laughs> Let's see how the second one does. That is a little better. And, you know, he's already shaken, so it is enough to finish him off at that close range. You do, in fact, put two rounds into him, and he crumples to the ground in a heap next to the prone Jonah Mox and Paul. I'll holster my guns and help them up. <laughs> it's okay, team. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. <laughs> having a day you know that's what happens when you don't follow the plans but you know what happens i did follow the plans uh okay the grenade didn't seem to be part of the plan but you know what let's roll it was with part it of the, since you were following my plan i assure you it was part of the plan the entire time <laughs> you know we'll agree to disagree but let's go forward because let's just blow it all up we got to get no, this thing, and we got to destroy the data. Here, we're not here to blow anything up, though. Then I'm very excited. To blow the guys up. We're not here to blow guys up. We're here to get a guy or a thing. So we're not here to blow guys up. Exactly. Right. So don't use grenades. <laughs> okay, noted. From now on, I won't use grenades. In that moment, it does occur to you, Vector Reigns, that you're not sure where the grenade came from. Yeah. How did he get that grenade in the first place? I've learned to stop asking questions about my crew where they come up with things. <laughs> All right, you are in front of a very large, very secure door with the uh, authorized personnel, restricted area, and nice bold print across it that these four gentlemen had been guarding until they were taken care of just a moment ago. Finally, something I can do. <laughs> Does my badge watch, work? <laughs> watch me screw this up. <laughs> Just... All right, uh, you have two options, of course. You can go with the electronics or with thievery for your attempt to open the door, depending upon which method you'd like to use. I, if I remember right, they should be pretty close to the same. Either way, you get a plus one to it because it involves breaking and entering, which you have a talent for. Yes, well, we don't like to talk about it. Is it? We call it a, uh, ooh, hold on. Yeah, I'm going with thievery. All right, what have you got for thievery? Uh, D10 plus one. All right, a D10 plus one and the D6 wild die. We're going to get a nine, which is a success with the raise. In just a few seconds, you're not even sure how he pulled it off. Jonamox has opened up this secure keypad, flipped it to the side, put a couple of wires together, and the doors just slide open. 
like he's meant to be there. Good inside work, is a inside is a laboratory area. There are numerous individuals in lab coats working at stations. Uh, Jonah Mox, you immediately spot one of your favorite possessions in the entirety of the universe on one of the tables. A matter cutter is just sitting there out along with several other <laughs> high tech tools and instruments. The majority of the scientists seem to be focused upon a single glass cylinder like tube and inside of it is a green sponge-like form. And uh, they're taking all kinds of readings from it and attempting to process information from it and are very fixated on it to the point where they clearly didn't hear the explosion that happened outside the lab or pay attention to the shooting. Um, I'm not going to be able to help myself. And I am going to squeal, oh no, that poor baby, and start rushing at the glass cylinder. <laughs> you guys heard it. Princess Hedgehog squeals and dashes across the room. Towards oh my god. Okay, well, I have to immediately dash into action, and while they're watching her, grab that matter cutter. <laughs> <laughs> you squeal, oh, that poor baby, and grab the matter. <laughs> yep, you've got yourself a matter cutter. The uh, scientist working at that station just stops for a moment, looks up from what they're doing, sees you, stares for a minute, and then slowly just turns their head back to their work and looks back down again and very pointedly doesn't lift their eyes again. <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> uh, you have approached this glass tube, Princess Hedgehog. It does have this this green sponge-like thing inside of it. It's clearly sealed within this tube, and uh, they're taking all kinds of little readings from it. It looks like they're about to use this little prodding device to try and take a physical tissue sample from it. That could be painful. Well, as a defender of all things spongy, I feel the need to start pontificating at them. <laughs> How does that go? Uh, it goes something to <laughs> the effect of uh, unbelievable. I have seen low things in my life, but never have I seen so so great pick on something so small and squishy. You don't even know what you have. How dare oh. you? How very dare you? Heart this poor, defenseless little sponge. In that my... is heart wrenching. <laughs> Absolutely heart wrenching. I'm going to need a persuasion roll from you uh, to see if you can sway these cold, hard scientists with your moving speech. What do you have for persuasion, Princess Hedgehog? Uh, I have a 10. All right, I'll take the D10 and a D6. Oh man, we're going to get an eight, which is a success with a raise. Yeah. You have deeply, deeply moved mm. these people of science. And you even see one of them, a tear forming in his eye as he begins to contemplate what exactly he has done. And they back away from it. Uh, I, we, we were just, I can't believe we followed those orders. They, they told us to, oh, this is terrible. You what, had what, every opportunity not to be monsters. You did. What do we do now? And it's now? okay. You can step away. And you can release that poor child into my protection. One of them and disengages a locking mechanism and lifts the glass seal. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jonah Mox. <laughs> no, that was just me reacting to them lifting the glass off of this thing that they're yeah. lifting their glass. That's oh, they're lifting. They're lifting the entire glass. Me going no. <laughs> Let me clarify. They're lifting the entire sealed glass tube chamber with the two. Oh, metal thank God! Oh, it's still okay. inside the tube. Okay. <laughs> and they gently, gently place it in the hands of Princess Hedgehog. But just and please, I, I cradle it. Please be careful. Uh, we, we discovered that this uh, that this wonderful, beautiful life form that I'm I'm so sorry we were involved in experimentation on it. Uh, 
it spontaneously releases a neurotoxin in the air, which uh, can cause the subjects to be in the area to become catatonic in a state of euphoria. We were attempting to synthesize the effect, and uh, well, I believe the company was going to sell it. Oh, nice. Do you have any samples? Oh, yes, here. <laughs> and he hands you one. <laughs> what about the data on all that? That's a lot of research. Oh, yes, it's all in these terminals would... right here. Oh, nice. I'm going to go steal that data. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just holding this thing and cooing at it. Just like, you poor little baby. You but who's a good baby? Who's just such a little cutie pie? I I'd also like a sample and some data. <laughs> I, I, I got um, you, Paul. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Uh which one of you is going to lead the uh the, the data theft? Uh, who who's got the better uh hacking skill between the two of you? Gosh, I don't know. Uh uh, not great hacking. Yeah. Six. Eight. All right. So why don't you uh, support him, Paul, and uh, use your hacking skill to support, and then Jonah Mox will make the attempt after your support. So if I can I get a D6 to. and a D6 wild die from Paul's hacking attempt to support Jonah Mox. And then we'll have uh, Jonah Mox's hacking attempt after that. Just in case you don't know what two ones looks like on the screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, acing it. Go okay. Increase that ace one, add another six-sided dice there. Let's see how successful he is in supporting. That is quite the support roll. Getting an 11, you are most definitely going to get a plus two to your hacking attempt, Jonah Mox. Nice. Uh, and in fact, because of his ace, I, I will even let you re-roll the uh, critical failure if you happen to be cursed. <laughs> We one. can't just <laughs> assume that I'm going to critically fail because I'm rolling dice. <laughs> oh, man. I, I am oh, going yeah. to assume that you're going to critically fail every dice roll from here I don't on. think. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't think Mark wants to give away that he's out to get me in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the D8 and D6 from Jonah Mox for his hacking attempt with a plus two bonus. Uh, that's going to be a nine, uh, an excess, a success with a raise. You are not only able to get all of the data, Jonah Mox, but you're able to delete all the backup copies simultaneously. Yeah. Removing any trace of their study of this extra dimensional being. Oops. How smart do these scientists look? Reasonably so. When I, when you, okay, now we have different varying uh, degrees of how smart someone looks like. Do they look smart even for scientists? Like, are they going to remember all this research? You would think that at least a couple of them will remember some very important things. Yeah, it would be hard to say that they wouldn't. I mean, if you want to be sure. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I say nothing, just so we're clear. Like, I'm not talking about this with anybody. Uh, but like, okay, so we got the thing, time to go. We got the thing, got the data. There's no reason yeah. for us to be here anymore. Off we go, everybody. Say goodbye to the scientists. Goodbye, anyway, scientists. Like, like, say goodbye. Like, lead, everybody, lead everybody out of the lab, close the door, then slip back under the door and kill those scientists. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm going to want one focus roll from you, and oh, uh, no. the scientists are rather defenseless after that. So, just the shape changing roll is all I'm going to need from you. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's a D8 and a D6, correct? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh goodness. Man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oof. This is good as I could do. Okay. Um, yeah, they're. Oh yeah, that's uh, that is one heck of a success with the thirteen. Oh, man. Uh, for, a moment, for a moment, for a moment, the whole team, you guys together. <laughs> for the moment, I get into a big black pile of goo with a knife hand, <laughs> <laughs> and then I slip <laughs> under a door. <laughs> oh, we had a we had a shout out, guys. Uh, Rhonda does not approve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and say Rhonda does not know. Uh, yeah. nor, nor does the rest of the party technically. He went away for a minute and then he came back. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I was stealing that matter cutter that I was had my eye on. Yeah. He had Which to get something. Yeah. I'm going to get you right here at this particular moment. So, uh, Paul, Vector, Princess Hedgehog, you've been making your way down this corridor, having gotten rescued the sponge and the data away. When Vector, you look over your shoulder and for a second, Jonah Mox isn't there. And then, well, he's catching up to you. He's there again. All right. 
Hey guys. Just Joe to mock things. Is, hey. anybody, yeah. Is there like a sink around or uh can't mm. got some scientists mm. on me? <laughs> I don't say that at all. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I am. I am not. I am not going to be telling them what I did. Just, just, of course, I think of course. you pass back uh, the way you came, and uh, crossing out of the checkpoint, you get a double take from the guards that are still at the checkpoint as they look at you, Vector. Uh, and then you know you you were just so damned intimidating when you came in that they still just salute anyway as you make your way out. Uh, and you I salute are, back. Yeah, have that. You know, with this bunch of. Being just like, yeah, at ease, you. Yep. And you are more than halfway back to the Reliance, making your way through the space station before <laughs> the general alarm sound, and you can hear the security alert as clearly someone has detected the horrors that went on within the facility. The ship, the ship to the ship. Can you make us fast again, uh, Princess? You know, I think actually I do still have enough points for that. Hey. Yeah, all right. As long as somebody carries me and Spongy. Oh, Aww. yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, give me that spell casting roll. Up. Give me that. All right, we're rolling a 12. D12 and a D6 wild die for Princess Hedgehog. And look at that killer drone, guys. That's a, good that's drone. a, that's a cool, that's a cool drone, yeah. Cool Is that real? Setup. Very cool. They are, in fact, all over the stage. Is that and John Stone? No, those are the security <laughs> drones that are flying all over the station looking for you right now. All right, everybody. Um, so let's get that D12 and that D6 from Princess Hedgehog and see how fast these guys can run. So you had the dice app set up for me to roll and you didn't want it to be <laughs> one, so we switched it over to... <laughs> okay, we got ourselves a nine, which is a success with the raise. So, yes, yeah. everyone is going to be hauling mm -hmm. mm -hmm. rear as you cross through the station, running as drones try to catch up. Security patrols spill out of corridors just a little bit too late to catch you. I'll try Bendy to find us a good path, too. Uh, something to keep us in the shadows as much as possible. Sweet. It in the classic fashion of uh, escapes in science fiction scenarios, they of course are shooting their blaster weapons and it's hitting the walls and floor and ceiling or firing just a moment too late as you round corridors. Uh, since you're gonna be guiding them through, uh, Jonah Mox, you wanna give us a stealth roll to uh, lead yeah. them down the uh, best path to avoid law enforcement personnel. What do you got for stealth, Jonah Mox? Well, in addition to being a big black pile of goo, <laughs> <laughs> in addition a, period yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> other than uh yeah it's a it's a d10 all right a d10 and you have oh, a wait, plus one oh, bonus oh, is that right yeah oh. that's a d10. the six aces and we're gonna get yourself a Ooh. nine which is a success Ooh. with the raise several times you're able to completely elude personnel and slip away until you reach the docks and you're able to get aboard the ship just a few moments ahead of security personnel reaching the dock. Now, when you get there, John Stone is still hooked up to the computer. He's seemingly motionless or comatose. Perhaps he's inside the ship. It's hard to say, you know, he his expression never really changes anyway. So right. he could be just totally like, not like comatose. Regular. Just John just Stone. Like, you're just regular right. John Stone. <laughs> But you think he's comatose because he didn't say anything insulting or berating or ask you what you were doing when you ran on board the ship. And uh, Rhonda is seemingly in a bit of a panic around him, uh, trying to get him to respond. And it looks like security personnel are on their way to your berth in the dock. But you've got still time left before the Reliance is scheduled to jump. Oh. We got to get out of here, guys. Yeah, well... Uh... I guess this is your chance. Hop on the cop pick. I'll see if I can find some guns. Yeah, make it happen. I thought you were good with... You know what? Let's go. Ships, All right. don't, ships don't shoot knives, Vector Rains. They could. <laughs> nope. Oh, like... Uh, oh. 
<laughs> I immediately go to Rhonda and say, look at my new pet. Rhonda, 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 look at my new pet. Look at him. Look at him. He's so cute and squishy and I want to keep him forever and ever and ever. I'm like, can I keep him? Can I please keep him? Can I run around the please? She uh, gives you a quick nod of yes and seems to not be as panicked anymore. Let's uh, go to Vector Reigns in the cockpit first. Do you happen to have a piloting score, Vector? I do have a piloting score. It's a D8. Wow. Give me that D8 and that D6 wild die from Vector Reigns uh, as you power out of the docking bay of this space station. A four is enough to get a success, and you are able to turn the Reliance just that perfect sideways to slip through the closing doors, just getting out. But it seems that they have already begun to launch pursuers. You're not going to have very long before they catch you. And worse, seemingly headed towards the station from further out in space are larger, more dangerous-looking capital ships. You're not sure you'll be able to evade for long enough before the ship jumps unless someone is able to do something about this crazy jump drive. We got a problem, guys. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Paul, can you work on yeah. the drive? Get us some speed? I'll see what I can do. Uh, All right. Paul, this is going to be a fairly difficult task because you are working with a strange form of technology that even you and all your travels haven't seen. And on top of that, you are fully aware from the events from previous that this peer spell have put some sort of security systems in place to try and keep people out. The very thing that John Stone was trying to circumvent when he was on board the computers. So I am going to need from you, you're, you're going to give me an electronics role, you're going to give me a repair role. And you're going to give me a science roll, all in that order. Dang. Electronics, repair, and science? Yes. So Can let's I start with your electronics. What do you have for electronics? It's going to be a flat 10. All right. A D10 and a D6 for the first roll. A 7 is going to be a success. Uh, what have you got on that uh, next roll for your repair? Repair is going to be a 10 plus 2. A D10 plus 2 following it up. Wow, we're going to get a 10. That is a success with a raise. And then the final roll, the science roll. Science. Uh, That's also going to be a 10 plus 2. Wow. Paul knows everything. Mm -hmm. The slow end of that is a 6. That's still a success between all four of those. You had four successes. So you are able to force your way into this jump drive and get it to trigger. Unfortunately, uh, as you're not fully familiar, it doesn't fully jump the ship. You leave this dimension. It all disappears in a quick and blinding flash, just as security ships are closing in. But now you're in some strange green energy instead of space or a dimension. It's just fluctuating green energy. In the, in the, in the cockpit vector, your sensors are just fluctuating all over the place. It, it can't tell if you're in solid, if you're in liquid, if you're even physically here at all, uh, what's on the scopes. It, it is just pure, strange, and the wildest thing you have ever seen piloting a ship. What did anyway. you guys do back there? Um, uh, can I common knowledge this, figure out what's going on? You, in fact, will be able to, Jonah Mox, as you have some experience interdimensional traveling. What is your common knowledge? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a die. That's, That's the worst dancer ever. Six, mm. eight. All eight. right, give me the D8 and the D6 wild die from Jonah Mox doing a common knowledge roll. And I've got I got a bonus to this one? I can't tell. A uh, five is still a success. And in this particular case, yes, you actually have a plus one to this type of common knowledge roll. So you're going to get a six on that one. You are certain that you are somehow inexplicably in the space between dimensions. Mm, I've heard about this. Okay. Well, we're not necessarily in immediate danger. Hey, right? that's a good thing. But is this the also, point where I open the <sighs> Or is it? We're we're not really anywhere. That doesn't sound like a good thing. 
It's probably not a bad thing. The ship's still going to jump when it jumps, oh, right? Okay. It's You're just, not really sure anymore. Yeah, it it, it could be bad. We could be, we could be stuck. But we're probably not stuck. And, and you know, it's better than being surrounded by uh, ships that were looking to shoot us down. Right? Yeah. You know, it, it would be Vector Rains, but looking at the console in the cockpit, virtually every single warning light and warning indicator is going off and flashing. Uh, collision warnings, low shields warnings, impact warnings, power failure warnings. So I got some like bad I news, said, everybody. Like I said, probably nothing. Um. Every uh, warning light is going off. So maybe we're going to die. Maybe we're not. And then ahead of you, you see something. I mean, sensors are useless and navigation is offline, but it looks like an opening, like a a, a hole in all of this green swirling energy directly I, ahead of you. Uh, go, beeline go for it. <laughs> There's not a right. The only Go visual toward thing the light. Light toward it. Yeah. If it's a black hole, I'll forgive you after we're dead. Yeah. And Thanks, system buddy. failing, you pass through this hole and you're suddenly in uh, another dimension. And not only that, you're in an atmosphere of a planet and every system on board the ship is failing as you plummet straight down, crash landing into water. This is fine. Uh, Prepare for... Rough landing, guys. And that, friends, is our show. I want you to tune in next week for our fourth episode, Matter and Energy, starring Sean Franklin, Helen Roundhill, Xander Layden, and Elise Moore. Stranded in an unknown dimension, our heroes encounter a new and terrible threat with sinister motivations. Will they be able to repair the Reliance and escape the clutches of this new enemy? Find out next week on The Reliables. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, so very much. Make sure that you tune in to all of the amazing Zoe streams. Check out Void Jumpers on Wednesday. They've been doing some really great stuff. Check out the Fantasy Network for hundreds and hundreds of hours of great independent fan-supported entertainment. Uh, we've got Zoe Game Night, some really great stuff that comes on uh, that show as well. Uh, they were doing some Pandemic Legacy recently. They're going into some other great fun games. It's all going to be wonderful. But make sure you're back here next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, for another episode of The Reliables. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.